Time for another Fixing Faulty eBay junk video and today I've got one of these things here. This is a TigerElectronicsGame.com It's a handheld games console slash PDA organizer type jack of all traits, master of none sort of device. So it didn't sell too well and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people don't recognize this or know what it is. But it came out around the same sort of time as the original Game Boy was being phased out for the Game Boy Color. So that's the, the market this would, thing would have been competing in. It does have a few more features over the original Game Boy and I'll get to those in just a moment. I'll not do a full review, I'll just give you a quick overview of the system. But yeah, this is what I'm going to be trying to fix today. Not this particular one, I got this years ago. It's got a cracked screen, so this one's pretty much done. I don't see myself getting any or being able to source any replacement parts for this, but I did buy this one just recently on eBay. This cost me I think it was about £9.40, including the postage, which is around, what, 13 US dollars. So my hope is um, getting one good console out of these two. This one, I think, has uh, a problem with the screen. It's not broken, it's got lines going across it, so I'm hoping I can use parts from this and these two just to make one good one. But yeah, this is what I'm going to be trying to repair today. Just for a bit of fun and to show you the size of this thing, here it is next to an original Game Boy. It is quite a lot larger, although this does have a lot more features over the uh, the Game Boy here. And uh, I'll show you next to the Game Boy Color. So this would have been out around the same time. I think this came out in 97 and this came out in 98. So there you go. This has a, a resistive touch screen on it, so it comes with a little stylus here that pops out and you can um, navigate menus and whatnot. And uh, what will I compare it to next? Here we go. Here's a Sega Nomad. It's probably around the same size as the Nomad. Nomad's a bit thicker, but yeah, same sort of footprint. And then we've got the, the massive Atari Lynx here. So yeah, that's the sort of size you're dealing with. It's not a, a pocket, uh, pocket size device in any way. But it does come with a load of features. It has two cartridge bays on it, so you can put two games in at one time. And the crazy thing with this is it actually has a port on the top, so you could get a modem and go online with it, so you could check your emails and whatnot. I don't know if you could play games online. I don't know if you could play games online with it, but you could definitely use it for um, using for your emails. Uh, so this was more of a kind of a crossover. It was more of a games console and a PDA. Let's just get straight into this and see what kind of condition this unit's in and if I can repair it or not. So it even comes with a little um, manual here, a bit of a, a bonus, wasn't expecting that, that's nice to see. So the system itself looks to be in pretty good condition, it has its stylus with it, which is nice to see. And if I take a quick look at the screen here, the screen seems to be in good condition, which is good as well. Let's have a look inside the battery bay. Um, is that a little bit of corrosion down there? A little bit of battery fluid, battery leakage down here, nothing major. So what I'll do is I'll get some batteries and we can test it out. I don't have any games for it, so it'll just be the onboard software. I'll grab some Poundland specials and try these out. Let's see if we get any signs of life from it. Oh, straight away. Get lines going across the screen. Let's try and adjust the contrast. Adjust the contrast, it kind of works. So, uh, there we go, seems to be booting okay, which is a good sign. But it looks like the screen has some sort of a connection problem with the, the main board. It's kind of a, it looks like a similar problem that you get with the original Game Boy. After time, the little, um, there's like a little ribbon strip that 
sits on the, the main board um, and it comes loose or delaminates or whatever you call it after uh, after some time. So it looks like this is maybe suffering from the same kind of issue. I wonder if pressing anywhere around it makes a difference. No. What I'll do is I'll get this opened up and we can have a, a closer look at it. Before taking it apart I thought I'd quickly check the touch screen on it and that does seem to be working. There we go. So that seems to be okay. Another good sign. This is why it's good to use uh, ice cube tray for your, your screws as you're taking things apart. The screws from the um, the battery compartment are a lot shorter than the all the other screws, so it's good just to be able to keep things separated and easily found again when you're going to put it back together again. That's the top part just popped off there, and we can get a better look at what's going on inside. And here we can see the the touch screen, the old resistive touch type, and around here this is what I suspect might be the problem. If you'll be able to see this on camera too well, but there's a long, like a ribbon cable, or a long row of uh, connectors here, which I think probably connects to the, the LCD underneath, and I'm guessing that's why it's not um, not showing properly across the whole screen. Probably a few of those uh, little connections are are loose, and that's why it's given us those lines. But uh, yeah, there we go. We're in. We can see what's going on inside the, the system there. That's it fired back up again, but it doesn't seem to make any difference if I uh, I push down on these contacts around here at all. So what I'll do, I'll take this apart further and uh, maybe try and see if we can get this whole screen assembly out. In a bit deeper now, I've managed to get the screen free from the, the main board. I had to snip a couple of wires, there's two. Uh, wires here that go up to the, the back side of the board here and this was also screwed into place and on top of that there was also a little blob of uh, hot glue that was keeping this down so yeah it was a bit it was a bit nerve-wracking trying to get this thing off here because if I mess up this cable here then it's pretty much game over but yeah here we go what I'll do now is I'll try and get that touch screen removed from the actual LCD. I think that's probably just held in by these little screws here. And then we can uh, see about fixing those contacts. But the board, um, touchscreen connects to the main board through this ribbon cable. Um, I don't think that, yeah, that's pretty much permanently attached to the board, the main board. And then the screen plugs into these little uh, pin headers just there. That's the LCD screen now removed from the system and paired away from the, the touch screen element there. <laughs> that was a really nerve wracking thing to do. It's held in place by a couple of bits of uh, tape, which I didn't see at first, and uh, a little clip here and then those screws. But at first I took the screws off and then I started trying to peel it back and it wasn't coming. And I was like, what's going on here? But it was these bits of tape, which you, you can't see when they're properly plastered against the circuit board but anyway that's now removed and uh, I'll maybe just run this run over this strip here I don't know if you can see that too well just run over this strip here with a, um, a soldering iron just at a low heat and try and see if this just needs to be uh, re-laminated, re-stuck, re-soldered whatever terminology you want to use for this back onto the LCD and hopefully that gets rid of all these missing lines that we're seeing on the screen but yeah that was not a fun job at all and I'm not looking forward to putting this thing back together again but there you go that's the LCD screen the touch screen element there it just folds over like that and then that sits in there and then goes back over Unfortunately, this one looks like it's going to be a bit of a lost cause. I ended up going in a little too heavy handed and a bit too hot with the soldering iron just here and managed to damage some of the traces beyond repair. And yeah, totally my own fault. 
I should have been a bit more cautious and a little bit more careful, but that does happen. Contrary to what some people seem to think, not everything I buy on eBay is a simple case of me cleaning it up and it just works again, no problem. This being a, a prime example. So yeah, this, this screen is pretty much done. You can see there's now even vertical lines appearing on it. I did manage to get rid of some of the, the horizontal lines and it was just a case of this uh, ribbon cable strip here coming detached from the, the main board. But trying to get that thing reattached properly without like specialist equipment, like reflow equipment or some sort of um, proper tools um, isn't going to be easy, especially if you're just using a soldering iron or a, a hot air gun or whatever. Managed to get some of them to come back on, but then as soon as you get one on, one of the, the lines would disappear and then you get a couple of rows back and then another one would appear down here and it's just, you're, you're like tearing your hair out trying to get the thing to work. And then obviously what happens is you end up uh, overcooking it and damaging it beyond repair. So yeah, a bit disappointed not to be able to get this thing up and running again. I do at least have now some spare parts. I've got a working game com. Um, other than the screen, I do have this one here still for parts as well. This has just got a broken screen. It doesn't turn on, but this will end up getting put back together again, and then it'll go into the uh, the bin of consoles, old consoles that don't work, and parts. And uh, maybe it'll get resurrected at some point in the future if I can find another one of these that's just got a. I don't know, some other damage other than the screen. But as always, I hope this was interesting to watch at least and uh, hopefully I'll catch you again soon.